This is Command Post, a series of discussions about military matters from Time and the Center for a New American Security. There's much concern in military circles about what's called uh, A squared AD, uh, anti-access area denial capabilities. China increasingly has, has the, the precision weapons to threaten our ships and our airplanes at a very long distances from their shore. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about our capability to, to confront that challenge and our general military capability out in the Western Pacific, which we used to be able to do pretty much anything we wanted to. Well, we're still, we're still out there and we still have uh, pretty significant capabilities. Uh, what, what the Chinese challenge poses in this regard is that uh, we can't be going in close to the Chinese littoral with impunity as we used to. I mean, 15 years ago, we used to laugh about the Chinese Navy and Air Force as a brown water Navy, as a coastal coast guard, and as an Air Force that couldn't fly over water. And, well, it's not the case anymore. And then when you add to the fact, uh, add, add to this that they have anti-ship ballistic missiles, uh, they have uh, uh, new carrier, aircraft. Carrier, carrier killers, sinkers, right? Ca carrier killers, right? So, so, so the U.S. Uh, can no longer really operate with uh, impunity, gay, and reckless abandon. I mean, we have to go in there very carefully. We have to be watching 360 degrees around. Of course, the Chinese submarine force is, uh, is considerable. Nothing slows a carrier battle group uh, faster than uh, submarines that you can find. So, uh, so the U.S. Uh, is going to need to uh, beef up uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of its assets, such as its integrated air defense, its electronic warfare, its ability to uh, control the electronic, electromagnetic spectrum, and anti-submarine warfare capabilities. These are capabilities that we must absolutely maintain, if not enhance, if we're going to continue to operate uh, in, in that uh, East Asian littoral, and I suspect we will be. And these are capabilities that, that we haven't really focused on since the demise of the Soviet Union. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, all ex I think uh, maybe ASW, anti-submarine warfare, may be the weakest card in the deck, but the others are, are, are ones that I think that we have given some, some uh, attention to. But uh, as the Chinese put out uh, new systems, we're going to have to be coming up with new counter systems as well. Well, we're, we're building a couple of $20 billion Ford-class aircraft carriers right now. Patrick, are we putting too many eggs in our aircraft carrier basket if indeed the Chinese can perfect a $10 million missile that can take out a $20 billion aircraft carrier? Depends on their air wing. Depends on the aircraft that will be on the aircraft carriers and their, their legs. Uh, if they've got long sea legs, no, the answer is we still need aircraft carriers to be that forward physical presence. But they will stay far enough away but that the missiles th can't reach them, That's right. right. They're going to have to be uh, more sensitive to the dangerous operational littoral right near uh, China. Um, they're going to still have major defenses, integrated defenses. Right now, we can defeat their DF-21D missile that's in test flights. Right. Um, this is the carrier-killing missile that, that, yeah. that could, could hit a carrier in the future. They're going to put that technology together. That's just a matter of time. Um, so we're going to clearly need smaller bases, more mobile forces, um, smaller assets, and yet the carriers, and carriers right now are on the chopping block because of the defense cuts. Uh, we have to be very careful about cutting our defense and our naval forces down below 300 ships. It's already below 300 ships. It's, it's projected to go slightly above 300, but we've almost never been this low historically in recent memory. Um, and China sees that trend. They're building submarines very quickly. They're putting together their anti-satellite weapons, their cyber space uh, weapons, uh, as well as their anti-ship ballistic missiles, their aircraft, fifth generation aircraft, and their submarines, and now a new carrier. Th this is the kind of capability that a decade from now has a psychological impact and then a military impact. And the Chinese strategy is largely about psychology. Mm -hmm. Right now they're playing a psychological game. But in a decade from now, this is probably a military game, not just a psychological game. And are we building the Navy we need uh, against this threat? Well, I don't, I'm not sure I've got the answer to that question. I think, I think frankly, that those are the questions that are, that are being asked and debated right now uh, here at home. Uh, so uh, we'll have to see as, as time goes on what decisions are going to be made because clearly uh, not everything that everybody wants in the Pentagon is going to get uh, funded and built. Some, some terrific choices are going to have to be made. Some costs and benefit calculations are going to have to be done. Uh, so so uh, that's, that's a discussion that's going on right now. But one thing is for sure, and I think the Chinese have been very clear about this, even in their publicly released white papers, they have been told 
uh, since 2004 and then publicly stated in their 2006 white paper, defense white paper, that the Chinese Navy has been told to extend China's strategic depth off its shore. And so that's what we're going to be living with. It doesn't matter what capabilities the Chinese come up with and, you know, uh, whether it's a, an improved ASBM, a carrier killer, anything else. The fact of the matter is, is that uh, the Chinese are, are going to be out there and we've got to be prepared to, to operate uh, in spite of it.